<laughs> Nathan pushed it out. Did you? Uh, when did you have this idea, and how long did you have to keep it a secret from Nathan? Uh, well, at first I was gonna dress up as Marvel Girl. I mean, uh, Marvel uh, X Men. And then you know the costume just wasn't turning out right. And then I guess about three months ago, I was sitting with my mom. It was around midnight. And I get very silly around that time. And I was like, wouldn't it be great if I dressed up as Nathan Firefly and Captain Reynolds? And my mom was like, oh my god. And I was like, what? She's like, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, well, let's do it. Why not? You know? Um, now you so do, yeah. do you just call a costume shop or? Oh the, no, okay. I had to search. I did a lot of online. Uh, oh, online you put in job. you put in the work then. I definitely put in time. Uh, I went to a historical uh, refurbishing company that where, where I got the pants. Um, the holster is actually a replica from Firefly. I could not find the replica gun sadly, so I got a um, Civil War Civil, Civil War Colt revolver. It's actually the weight of a real one, which I thought that'd be cool, but now walking around and realizing, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, the shirt I got from JJ Bean or something Bean. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. So I did I definitely uh, put in time. Shoes are from Zappos. You can get them down. Yeah. And was the look on Nathan's face just worth all oh, of that? It was worth everything. He's great. <laughs> I, I knew. I, I knew he'd like it. So, and it was fun for me because I loved Firefly. Even before I did Castle, I was like, the oh, Castle is cool. You know, and I got the call back and I was like, hey, did you feel it? <laughs> well, this show got a little bit cooler. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it was. And I dressed up yesterday as um, Shauna from Shakugan no Shauna. It's a Japanese anime series and it's done some in English, but the, it's way better. Uh, and that was like Zedward contacts in. I was walking around the floor, <laughs> thinking I was all incognito with my like samurai sword, but then people still came up to me, and I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, I guess it's like a peek in some red hair. <laughs> so Alexis is going to college. Yeah. Well, she's applying. Are, are we going to see you on the show less often then? Or? Oh my gosh, you know I hope not. <laughs> Comic-Con is a good sign that I'll be here a little longer. Um, I don't think I've done anything to make anyone upset. I think they all like me. Um, but, yeah, she's applying. I mean, she seems to really like this boyfriend. And that's when they is like Molly Quinn that I'm not really into. I'm like, you know, date around. Don't, don't do it. You're 17. Come on, honey. You know, Alexis, it's fun. Go there. But she's trying to get out. And I, personally, I think it may just be an attempt to get more time for my dad now that he's so focused on, you know, Detective Keith and Becky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, that's, that's, that's my personal opinion. So, but she's not bluffing, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, she seems to want to, like, emulate Kate Beckett to a certain degree. Do you think she might Emulate? To... You think she wants to emulate her? Just slightly. I think she might be drawn to some of the police procedural aspects, especially <laughs> since her dad's now kind of working in it, even though he's a writer. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that... I think if she emulates anyone, it's uh, Lady Parrish. I think she goes for the medical side of things. That's just a personal opinion. I think that, especially as episodes, in, like she might have at first liked Detective Kate Beckett. I'm sure she loves her as a strong woman, but she's been putting my dad in danger, and my dad is my life. You know, he's all he's who I've taken care of. He, you know, he, he's he's almost my son. So to see his attention be taken by this other woman, and she's not really treating him in an appropriate way. That the way that. He, I think he should be treated. I think that there, if anything, will be more friction between Kate and myself. I don't think that they really are going to get it on too well this season. The Castle and Alexis um, relationship has been said to be one of the best father-daughter relationships. Can you talk a little bit about what that, you know, that relationship and? Um. Yeah, Nathan's great. The, the moment I met him, I was just like, "You're awesome." You know, and it, it was it was just a very mutual. Thing. I mean, I love my dad. I've always been a daddy's girl. I never did boy scouting. I was a boy scout. That's so. <laughs> one. Uh, so we did everything together. And then I met Nathan. And he was he was like a younger version of my dad. In fact, um, in in our apartment, there are pictures of me and my actual dad set up because they look so much like Nathan. Like when my dad was like my dad looks like Nathan when he was younger. So. Um, yeah, he's a wonderful guy, and it's funny, he always, he says this to my mom, he never said it to me, but what I heard from my mom, he's like, is Alfred like a guy I'm dating around set or whatever, you know? <laughs> They're always very short lived, don't worry. <laughs> He'll be like, you know, you know, every time I know that Molly's dating a guy, I just want to break his legs. <laughs> you know, he's 
that I really want, and like, that's what he says. So he's very, I go to him for advice. He's a lovely guy. He's, I'm very loyal to Nathan. Castle and Alexis kind of had their first fight last season. Yeah. Um, is there going to be more of Alexis trying to really assert her independence and kind of come of age and become a woman? You know, I think she wants to, but now, I think that that's another like um, source of friction is that she wants it, that she wants to branch out on her own, but now that her dad is taking all this unnecessary risk, it's like, God, you know, I still have to be here and watch you like a three-year-old, you know, and you're not letting me, which is even scarier. Um, and I think that it's, yeah, it's scary for her. And so, yes, yeah, she wants to branch out. She wants to be a woman. And in a way, she can't really because she realizes she has to take care of her dad, which she loves to do. But at the same time, it's like, come on, you know. Like I, She has no reassurance. And now her now her face is looking very shaky, and that's not comfortable for anyone. So. Um, how are you, I mean, you're now doing the voice on the Winx Club for Nick. <laughs> um, how are you managing to balance both, you know, Castle and that? Well, that's a great thing about voiceover. Like, they work around what you do. Um, doing Winx is a dream come true, actually. I enjoy every moment of it. Um, it's, it's pretty easy, actually. Like, I work on Castle maybe two, three times a week. Yeah, it may get more, it may get less, who knows. But, and so they just kind of plug in whenever I have, like, in these schedules with four-hour blocks. All the girls are extremely lovely. We're hoping to come to uh, Comic-Con next year and uh, even dress up as her characters, which I, I think I'm probably the only one who wants to do that. <laughs> and I will, even if, if, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, if, if I have to buy my own ticket to come here, I will dress up as blue. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so it, it's really fun. I love it because I have nieces that age. I have a two-month-old niece. I have a four-year-old niece, and I have a six-year-old niece. So they love to watch it, and they're always like, I'll hear them in the background, like, no, Molly's blue, I'm Flora, I'm Stella, no, I want to be Stella, like, always, like, chattering everywhere, and they'll be like, the baby, oh, the baby can be a girl, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's very, it's fun for them to leave something behind that they can watch, because I would never let them watch Castle, I mean, that, that wouldn't be good, so, it's fun, I enjoy everything I do. Thank you. Thank you, guys, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.